The second expansion for Pokemon Sword and Shield, The Crown Tundra, is due to be released on October 22nd, but even on the practical eve of its release, we still haven't heard hardly anything about it, even with the trailer that we got a couple days ago. There's naturally a lot of secrets and unexplained details everyone wants answers to, but a lot of them might be a bigger deal than you actually realize. This video is all about explaining what those details are, what they could mean, and why they could end up becoming a really big deal in the grand scheme of things. One thing in particular that's really flying under the radar with the Crown Tundra is that it is, for all intents and purposes, a holiday title, not only for Game Freak, but Nintendo as well. While not in the traditional sense, as it's only DLC, this is a major expansion to a major title that is releasing within the holiday window, especially when you consider that they are releasing a bundle pack for Sword and Shield that includes both of the expansions that comes out November 6th, so certainly in the holiday window, and other than Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, there aren't really any other holiday titles to speak of for Nintendo that we know of right now. While plans could have been altered due to this year being thrown out of whack due to obvious reasons, it was always the plan even before all of that happened for the Crown Tundra to release during this time of year, and I believe that is a very calculated move. We already know it's the bigger and beefier of the two Sword and Shield expansions, and that would be due in part to the fact that it is in effect a holiday title, and with it being just that, it can be expected to really bring the heat in other ways too, with it being given that status by Nintendo and Game Freak themselves. There is a driving theme behind the content of the Crown Tundra as well, and that all has to do with legendary Pokemon. From the new Pokemon Calyrex to the Galarian Legendary Birds, new Regis, and even all of the older Legendary Pokemon being made available as well, there is clearly a huge focus on these types of Pokemon for this part of the expansion. And if there is one thing that has been very much glossed over to this point, it's the story involving these Legendaries. While old returning legendaries are just there for gameplay purposes, the new ones like the Regis, the Birds, and Calyrex all are going to have some kind of story-based reason for being included. While that story will simply have to be told in order for us to know what it is, the intriguing part is how they all fit together. These three separate groups of Pokemon are definitely separate to each other in every way other than they are all appearing in the Crown Tundra, and are all clearly a part of the story. So what does Calyrex have to do with the Regis, for instance, or the Regis with the birds, or the birds with Calyrex given that they're all pieces to the same puzzle? How do they all fit together in knowing they all originate from this same place within the region? The answer to that is anyone's guess, really, but it might just carry a little more weight knowing what we know about what's to come for the franchise in the near future. It has been very clear that both expansions for Sword and Shield are acting as stepping stones, making moves forward in terms of gameplay and being a transitional phase from what Sword and Shield was to whatever major title is next. And that fact is made monumentally more important due to the fact that the Crown Tundra is leading directly into the 25th anniversary of the franchise next year. It goes without saying that this is basically a golden anniversary for video game franchises, and Pokemon are going to have some serious plans for it, that most assuredly is going to culminate in some major game toward the end of next year. And with how often Pokemon games like to tease and foreshadow upcoming ones, you can bet your behind that there is going to be some hint dropping going on in the Crown Tundra. Could that be for Diamond and Pearl remakes, maybe? Something else? Time will tell, but I can almost assuredly say that there will be some kind of connective tissue in this expansion to whatever is coming next. And doesn't it feel like the timing is just a little too good that we're getting this big, legendary-filled, lore-filled experience right before a major anniversary, almost as if it's a primer for what's to come? I don't think it's as much of a coincidence as some might believe, so I would advise to keep your eyes peeled for any and all hints, foreshadowings, and more once we finally get our hands on the expansion. 
And speaking of a lore-filled experience, one extremely curious thing about the environment of the Crown Tundra that is sure to play into the story in a big way are the two large trees. One of these trees is full of leaves and even serves as a backdrop to a fight between the legendary birds, but then the other one is withered and dead and is also surrounded by a large castle-like structure. These trees are obviously way too distinctive to not mean something, so how will they tie into the lore of this place exactly? And even more interestingly, what connection do they have to the legendary birds, as once again we see them fighting in front of one in one of the trailers? And what of the castle that surrounds the dead tree? What does it mean and what story does it have to share? Furthermore, why is there one live tree and one dead tree? All of this seems like it's tightly woven together and should prove to be immensely interesting as details on all of these things finally come to fruition. While the trees and their importance might be obvious, however, there are a lot of things about the Crown Tundra that are also flying under the radar that should prove to be immensely exciting and interesting. For instance, we saw in the Isle of Armor how we were given a rival in either Clara or Avery, just like we have in the main game. So it's likely that the same will occur in the Crown Tundra, except we have met no such character to this point. We do see mentor characters in each expansion, with Mustard for the Isle of Armor and Peony for the Crown Tundra, which further suggests that parallels like these will exist for both expansions. So the only question is, who will serve as the rival in the Crown Tundra? Will there be more than one, just like in the Isle of Armor, or will there be a singular rival? And what role will they play in the story? Peony has been mentioned to have a daughter, who we have not seen yet, who could possibly be the rival herself, and she is another character that needs to be paid attention to, as she is sure to be important as well. And speaking of characters we have not yet seen, it's been subtly mentioned that there actually exists some form of community and townspeople within the Crown Tundra, but no details other than a quick couple blips of gameplay have been specified. This likely means that we will see something more akin to an actual city in this new area, with houses and NPCs to interact with, which is really exciting considering the Isle of Armor did not have that. There's even a possibility of new, unrevealed Pokémon being present as well, as there have been somewhat prominent rumors discussing the idea. And while rumors are mostly a crapshoot, it seems to be the case that all the stops are being pulled out for this expansion, and based on the content, the timing, and the implications of it all, it's entirely possible we could see more brand new Pokémon, and frankly just about anything else in this expansion as well. What do you think about the Crown Tundra though? What do you think the answers to these secrets truly are? Let me know in the comments below, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. You can support the channel further if you would like as well by streaming my Pokemon remixes on Spotify as well as other platforms, and watching my Pokemon Cardinal series if you haven't yet, both of which help out immensely and are insanely, insanely appreciated. With that said, I will be back very soon with another video, and until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.